Good evening, Oasis. Welcome, everybody, both here and far. Um, tonight, our call to worship is taken from Proverbs 17:17, 17, 17, which reads, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. We all, as Christians, sometimes talk the talk, but don't always walk the walk. We tend to put down other people, ignore other people, judge other people. Um, so I chose this verse um, because it reminds us that out of God's great love, he sent his only son to die for us, to show us his love for us. And it is really because he loved us first that we need to love at all times, everyone, and show everybody compassion and kindness at all times. So with that, let's all stand and we'll sing praises to him together. I believe in the sun. I believe in the risen one. I believe I overcome by the power of his blood. Amen. Amen. I'm alive, I'm alive because he lives. Amen.
Thank you for being with us tonight here for the Oasis Contemporary Worship at Zion Lutheran Church in Fort Myers, Florida. I'm Pastor Curtis Dieterding, worship leader for the service this evening. It's good to have you with us online, and it's good to have all of you who are with us here in person tonight as well. And you may be seated at this point. If you are, by the way, viewing us online, we... Uh, want you to know there is a worship sheet and an Oasis informational sheet that's available to you through a weekly e-blast. Just simply uh, email zionfm.org or ask to be on the Oasis list. And for all of you who are here in person tonight, uh, there is a sign-in folder. You'll find it there on one of the chairs. We would just ask if you would please just to sign in on that uh, sheet. It's noted there on the first uh, empty sheet. There's also going to be an opportunity for prayer requests and thanksgivings that you might have. It's also there in the folder jacket. Uh, when we gather the offering a little bit later on, if you have a prayer request and you'd like for it to be included in this evening's prayers, just drop it into the offering plate and Mr. Tim will make sure he brings that up to me and we'll uh, have those all together uh, here to lift up to the Lord. Online worshipers, too, you can also uh, get involved by offering prayer requests by just going to uh, Pastor Hank Simon's email. That's Pastor Hank at Zion FM. That's zionfortmyers.org. What would Jesus do? That's been a guiding question for Christians throughout recent years. This month, that question is turned around in our sermon series, asking the question, what would Jesus undo? We're going to be looking at different actions in our life, which really hurt Jesus, really 
uh, hurt our relationship with him, things that we do that Jesus, quite frankly, would like to see undone in our lives. And tonight we're going to look at hypocrisy. That was the subject I was given. So we'll take a look at that and see just how is it that God's word will lead us through trying to turn things around when it comes to hypocrisy. And usually it starts with uh, confessing it first. Let's see if we get there tonight. We're going to hear about this in the scripture readings right here first, but first of all, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Loving God, you know our frailties and our failings. Strengthen us through the work of your spirit that we may turn our hypocrisy into honesty as we serve Jesus, your Son, and our Savior. Amen. In his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus used what we call picture language. He uses picture language to talk about what it means to be a hypocrite. Before we accuse others of not being honest, let's listen to what our Savior says when we need to examine our own lives. Our first reading is from Matthew, the seventh chapter. Do not judge others, and you will not be judged, for you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. And why worry about a speck in your, own fr in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye, when you can't see past the log in your own eye. Hypocrite! First, get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. The Apostle Peter echoes Jesus' condemnation of hypocrisy when Peter includes hypocrisy in a list of evil behaviors. We hear that list now. A reading from 1 Peter. So get rid of all evil behavior. Be done with all deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy, and all unkind speech. Like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness. Thank you, Tim. As we heard earlier, you know, people have used those, word, those letters WWJD, and most Christians could pretty much tell you what that means uh, before I mentioned it earlier, even this evening. But for years, these letters have appeared on bracelets and cups and t shirts. I've even seen them in tattoos and on bumper stickers as well. And by the way, if you are a Christian listening at home or here in person and have never heard these letters before, please don't let it bother you. This has been around for a while now. It's been popularized. Uh, you probably don't hear about it as much as we used to do. But just like we said earlier, you know, we, we're making a twist to that WWJD, from what would Jesus do to what would Jesus undo in our lives. Last week, Pastor Hank talked about undoing indif indifference in our lives. This week, we listen to what God has to say to us concerning hypocrisy. So I had to go right to the word itself. You know, like where in the world did this world word come from and how did it all get started? Well, usually a lot of words come from the Greek when it comes to the New Testament. So you have this word hypocrite or hypocrites is the Greek word for this, uh, this word. And it actually means an actor, a stage player. And it literally interprets this way. An interpreter from underneath. It's actually one who wears a mask and speaks from underneath the mask, so you can't really see who the real person is, but you can hear them. 
You can hear what they're saying. It reflects this old Greek actors who wore masks uh, speaking from underneath. Eventually, this Greek word actually evolves into other meanings as well. For example, it would refer to any person who was wearing a figurative kind of mask, pretending to be someone or something that they are not. And this meaning made its way all the way up to medieval France and England, where it now started to show up in religious contexts, referring to someone who pretends to be morally good and pious in order to deceive others and live life as they really wanted to live. In the religious world, we know hypocrites as those people who do not practice what they preach. They say one thing, and yet they live life a whole nother way. You know, the number one complaint about Christians is that they're nothing but a bunch of hypocrites. The number one complaint of being a hypocrite is not always seen or known or understood. Those who believe that Christians are hypocrites see a gap between what we say we are and how we live. Humans are not cold, calculated robots, and we typically have a higher opinion of ourselves than what is warranted. Most humans have a very self-serving bias where we evaluate our own abilities and performance much higher than what it actually is. People who achieve a certain level of intellectual achievement in certain contexts can reverse this, but we mostly, I think, overly think ourselves as being, I'm a pretty good person. <laughs> It's no surprise that this brain is riddled with all kinds of cognitive memory biases and is geared toward making us feel good and decent and capable, no matter what the reality may be. The problem is, is that our judgments of other people are a lot more realistic than they are of our judgment of ourselves. I love listening to what Jesus had to say about other people that are hypocrites, not, not me. And especially when he gave this whole dissertation about the Pharisees. And he came right out and said exactly why they were hypocrites. I'm just going to read just a little portion of that. But if you'd like to read the whole thing, it's chapter 23 in St. Matthew's Gospel. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. For you, never, you neither enter yourselves nor allow those who enter to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and the plate, but inside they're full of greed and self-indulgence. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful, but within are full of dead bones and uncleanness. So you also outwardly appear righteous to others, but within you're full of hypocrisy and uncleanness. Amen. How would you like a sermon like that? Oh, there's much more, but, but I think you get the point. So, by the way, do you know a hypocrite? Is there one sitting beside you? Oh, no, please don't point. Don't point. So, the truth of the matter is there actually is a bit of hypocrisy in all of us. If we truly take a good and honest look at ourselves if we can see ourselves in ways that people around us see us. A hypocrite wants this illusion of public virtue, yet hide their vices. Every time we have 
good intentions and let ourselves down, we, in essence, look like, and in, our, in the really truest sense of the word, are hypocrites. The problem with practicing what you preach is that it takes work. Trying to maintain a high moral standard that you expect of everybody else. You tell people to give money to charity or abstain from certain vices and temptations. So you know what that means. The same goes for you. But what if you just said, you do these things, but you really don't? You get all the benefits of people thinking you're good and that you're a capable person, but yet you know you don't have any restraint. You know, that's a win-win. <laughs> well, until the mask comes off. So just how do we undo this this evil behavior, really, of hypocrisy. Every time that I hear somebody make the comment, I, don't go, I wouldn't go over to that church, it's nothing but a bunch of hypocrites. I've always been so tempted to say, oh, there's room for one more. But I restrain myself. An American author by the name of Brennan Manning once wrote, the single greatest cause of atheism in the world today is Christians who acknowledge Jesus with their lips and then walk out the door and deny him with their lifestyle. That is what an unbelieving world simply finds unbelievable. That's why Christians are called hypocrites by those who hear one thing but seek another. He's in agreement with the way in which the world looks at those who claim to be followers of Jesus. So again, we're back to that same question. How can we find the strength in God's leading to undo hypocrisy in our lives? Well, prayer, of course, is the, the, the best place to always start when we're looking for God's mercy and forgiveness and strength. We always want to start with prayer. But what might be helpful to seeing hypocrisy in our lives is observed and discovered in a different way. Like, can we look at what would the opposite of being a hypocrite look like? One who is not a hypocrite would be someone, I think, that would be faithful to their word. Someone who follows what they actually confess and believe and profess. We are the opposite of being a hypocrite when there's no disparity between what we do and what we wish we did. It's been said that hypocrisy is the gap between what we show and who we are. I had mentioned that before. When Paul wrote to his brother Titus, who was a pastor, he wrote this about one who is like a hypocrite. Chapter 1, verse 16, he writes, A hypocrite is like this. They claim to know God, but their actions deny him. Jesus has zero tolerance for hypocrisy. He, on the other hand, has unlimited grace and forgiveness for a sinner who recognizes that and repents of their sin. So, there is hope for a hypocrite, after all. All of us who hide behind a mask for those times when we say one thing and then we do another, yes, there is hope. When I take a serious look at my own life, you know, I see a, a father, a teacher, a pastor who instructs his own children, who instructs his own congregation and, and people within, within his own circle of friends, what's right and what's wrong, and then I see a man also that fails 
to follow exactly what it is I say. Have these words ever come out of your mouth? Oh, hey, hey, don't do as I don't do as I say, or don't do as I do. Do as I say. Or maybe you've said something like this. Do you see what I just did? Yeah, never do that. Don't ever do that. I think as parents, as leaders, as friends, I'm sure we've said something along those lines a time or two. And I think we'd just rather forget about those times and block them out and go back to feeling good about ourselves that we're not such a bad person. Someone once said, I'd rather be an honest sinner than a lying hypocrite. Let's hear what God's Word says about some of this. In Proverbs, we hear that such a person, whoever conceals their sin, does not prosper. But the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. And from John's Gospel, in the, actually it's from John's first letter, we hear in chapter 1, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Do you have the strength and the boldness to say along with the psalmist these words, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offense in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Be careful. <laughs> Are you bold enough to pray that prayer? Because what's God going to actually see in there, in your heart and in your mind? You have nothing to fear when you have nothing to hide. Jesus has zero tolerance for hypocrisy and yet he has unlimited grace and forgiveness for the repentant sinner. He proved this through his own life. He perfectly practiced what he preached. He knows that we struggle with hypocrisy. And he came into this world and into our lives to do something about it. The gap between what we show and who we are. No matter how hard we try to undo this sin, we're not able to close this gap because we're not perfect. Jesus, however, does close this gap for us. Those same Pharisees that he referred to in that speech about hypocrites, the same religious leaders that saw to it that he would be eliminated. They are men whose lives look good and wholesome on the outside, but came up with this evil scheme to do away with this one whom they didn't like what he had to say. They actually convinced the Roman government to have him put to death. And they succeeded. So it seemed. What they witnessed on that day was not just an enemy of theirs that was dying and bleeding on a cross, but they were actually watching a human sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Little did they know that they were contributing to the very will of God that His Son be sacrificed for us. You see, Jesus always kept His word. He told His disciples again and again how He must be killed and die and rise on the third day. It is one great loving act that provides us now a collapse of that gap between our sin and His holiness. As through this act, He gives us His righteousness, His holiness, His grace, His mercy to cover all our sins, including the sin of hypocrisy. And He did this because He has zero tolerance for hypocrisy. He has zero tolerance 
for all our sin. But we can rest assured that he has fully demonstrated through the laying down of his very life for us that he has unlimited mercy, unlimited grace and forgiveness. Amen. Sing along with me. darkness seems to hide his face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. My anchor holds within the trumpet sound oh may I then in him be found dressed in his righteousness alone faultless stand before the throne Christ alone cornerstone weak made strong in the same I was supposed to say, <laughs> when we pass the offering plates around, if you had any prayer requests, did anybody have a prayer request? If you want to hold it up, okay. I do have one here that was given to me earlier, so we will include that when the time comes. Now, I also want to just mention again, if you haven't had an opportunity to sign the folder, the registration folder, we'd love for you to do that. We'd love to be able to contact you and even put you on our email list if you'd like. Let us, uh, let's pray and offer uh, offering prayer to our Lord. 
Heavenly Father, you placed your spirit into our lives when it brought us to faith in Jesus. Now we place before you these offerings from blessings which you have loaned us for this life. Receive them and build your church so all may come to know Jesus, your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So as I mentioned, uh, I did receive a prayer earlier this evening. I know that uh, Linda's daughter had had surgery, and so she's recovering from back surgery. Well, she had that yesterday. There was a little bit of an infection from a previous surgery, and so uh, they went in to, to make sure that that was all cleansed out, and she said she's doing better today. So that's good news. And as you notice, Pastor Hank and his wife Mary are not here tonight. And uh, that's because Mary received an award last night at the College of Education at the University of Illinois. And I wanted to just, uh, actually, I should get this straight, <laughs> at Illinois State University. Apologize to all those who I misspoke there. Uh, but Dr. Mary Mann Simon has actually been inducted into the Hall of Fame last night during that university's 2021 homecoming celebration. It's quite an honor, and we're very proud to have her with us here and among us, and we surely praise and give thanks to God uh, for that. You may not know this, and those of you who don't know who she is, she uh, was actually trained to be an early education uh, educator, and she is actually a world-renowned children's author, both here in the United States, around the world. She's had millions of books that she has sold, uh, and she is prolific in uh, helping parents uh, with uh, raising their children. She used to have a show on a radio station in St. Louis where I actually occasionally was a guest every now and then, not on her show, on another show. But uh, she, was, uh, she had a show actually called Front Porch Parenting. Uh, it was on for about 15 years. Uh, it's a syndicated show and has been heard on many stations around the United States. Uh, she helped me out when I was raising my kids, too. On, on occasion, I would uh, listen to what she had to say. I asked her, I said, well, what do you think about, you know, um, uh, getting this award? And in Mary's style, I thought I better quote this for you because uh, she says it best. She said, never underestimate God. He does incredible things. I've told Hank that I feel like God's name should be on that plaque instead of mine. He opens all the doors. As you can see, she's ever so humble in her reception of this award. Uh, she is gracious for all the opportunities that God has opened up to her to be able to share the gospel the way she has through her children's books and through some of her other writings as well. And so we're going to offer up a prayer of thanksgiving to God tonight uh, for giving her those many open doors during her professional life. Let us pray. In fact, let's stand as we offer up our prayers to the Lord. Heavenly Father, sometimes we overlook how your church has lived through many anxious times in the past. We fail to remember the persecution of your people, including those who are suffering right now around the world for their faith in these days. Use their example of speaking the truth about what they believe to help us examine those times when we are hypocrites. Forgive us and give us courage to be honest with ourselves in our words and in our witness to others. And we lift up to you this night, uh, Dr. Mary Mann Simon. Uh, we lift up all of what you have given her opportunity to do, to be able to open so many doors for her to be able to share the gospel in special ways with people all around the world. Continue to bless her and Pastor Hank as they make their journey back home, that you would keep them safe and sound in their travels. Guide us by your spirit to be concerned about those people whose lives are not as easy as ours. Move your people to assist those who suffer because of warfare, famine, plague, natural disasters, and other hardships. Send that same spirit to work through Christ's people to bring reconciliation to our country. Guide our efforts to stand up against racism, injustice, violence, hatred. Creator God, bless medical care providers, first responders, and essential personnel with health, 
and rest and safety as they treat persons infected with coronavirus. Lord of life and death, we pray for all who mourn. Comfort those especially who grieve uh, victims of COVID-19 in our country and the world. Surround them always with your love. And Lord Jesus, you are the great physician, being with all who are sick in any way. We especially ask for special prayers, a special prayer for Kathy Lewis, the daughter of Linda, recovering from back surgery, as well as those individuals with medical concerns that we now name silently in our hearts. We also pray for those who battle frequent spiritual, emotional, and physical discomfort or pain, as well as those who seek to overcome addictions. Lord of the nations, we pray for our country's national, state, and local leaders. Give to all our leaders, elected and appointed, and to all public servants and politicians, humble hearts, listening eyes, and servant-like caring, so that they put the common good above their own interests. Holy Spirit, guide our sisters and brothers in the faith at San Jose Roman Catholic Mission, our sister congregation in the Florida, Georgia District, St. Paul Lutheran Church in Boca Raton, and as well as all of us here at Zion. Finally, Heavenly Father, because Jesus has invited us to do so, we turn over all our other needs to you using words that your Son has taught us to, to use our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
I want to thank you for being here in person tonight and thank you for all of you who are watching online at home. If you know of someone you feel would benefit spiritually from being a part of our Oasis community, please take time to invite them, either online or here again in person. Please tell them also about these services. We, are, we do have recordings of Oasis archived online. Uh, also, you'll find them on our YouTube channel, the Zion Lutheran Church, Fort Myers. And this can be all accessed through our Oasis page, through our website. Just simply uh, Google Zion Fort Myers and you'll get there. Next Saturday, our sermon series continues on what would Jesus undo. Next week, we're going to consider undoing spiritual pride. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. All thanks be to God.